What's going on everybody? Oxidize your testosterone daddy bringing you 10 tips, 10 things for new players that will make you better at Corrupted Dungeons. Just a few things that's going to help you with your win rate, uh, getting the most out of every Corrupted Dungeons and making sure you come out in the green and not in the red. Are you ready to get better? Are you ready to be the most high testosterone lord, king, queen out there in the fields? Well keep on watching. So the first thing as a new player, what you want to know are the different levels of corrupted dungeons. You have a hunter, slayer, and stalker. So right from the get go, right fresh off the boat, out of the gate, you can both get into a hunter and a stalker level of difficulty. Now as a new player, I recommend going a hunter right from the get go because you only need 800 IP to get in. You know, tier four gear, nothing too crazy anyone can get into it also you can only do them in the blue and yellow zones so it's not full loop pvp and when you're inside the dungeon if you get invaded or die from a, a, a player's hand it is not full loop pvp you just get knocked out of the dungeon easy peasy all you do is you lose a little bit of your um infamy and a little bit of your um uh, durability okay so i recommend sticking with hunter but if you if you have the cojones if your testosterone is way up there and you feel like you could do it go for the stalker why not give it a shot just know that it is full loop pvp and be careful the next thing you might want to know is uh you, you you can't swap out of anything when you get into the dungeon you can only swap uh abilities now so in this case we're going to talk about food what i recommend is you have a you have a pve food and a pvp food okay so what i recommend is that you eat the cabbage soup or whatever uh, HP region food you want before you enter the dungeon, boom. And before you enter the dungeon again, go ahead and make sure you have your other food equipped because once you go in, once you go in, brother, you are not going to be able to swap out anything. So let's get into it. So just to be clear, once you're in the dungeon, just like this, you can see everything's grayed out. You cannot... You, you, you can't you can't take it off. You wouldn't be able to put anything on. The only thing you can do is switch abilities. Okay, easy peasy. Now, since we're already here, well, I'm already talking to you, might as well get into the next tip here. Um, to invade or not to invade. At any given point, you can be invaded no matter where you are, no matter what you do. But if you wanna increase the chances of getting invaded and you can also invade, you can go ahead and hit up this contract right here. As you can see to the right of, to the right of the screen, we are now searching for a dungeon. And so at this time, we're just going to uh, defeat enemies keep grinding into me and wait to get uh, invaded and not invaded okay the importance of knowing this is that if you wanted just to, if you wanted to grind infamy um, without the worry of being invaded you don't have to take the contract and you can just uh, you, 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 you can just grind the mob that to me it's a very viable way of getting infamy it's, it, it's yes it takes longer but it's it's something that you can do with a low chance of dying you know if you're in a blue and a yellow zone maybe it doesn't matter but if you're more in like a you know full loop pvp situation you might not want to try to get invaded you know it's it's just one of those things you, you, you have to realize where does your priorities lie okay so i want to talk about just some general gear recommendations uh there's a, there's a ton of different <clears throat> um oh there's a ton of different builds out there that you can do for 1v1 pvp however if you want to try out new weapons if you want to try out different types of builds let me give you some things that i would say are um staples and things that if you don't know what to use you can always use these and have some pretty good success First and foremost is the mage robe. The purging shield is extremely important because it removes buffs. It removes everything from hunter hoods uh, to things like a great nature staff, ease, uh, a whole bunch of stuff that will benefit you. And it's really, really important to have. So if you don't know what to use, a mage, uh, mage robe is extremely good. Also, I like to use the Scholar Sandals a lot in a lot of my builds because it gives you energy back. So you don't have to have like a Limhurst cape. You don't have to have a Scholar uh cow for energy or you don't have to spend money on a cultist robe you can use these get a ton of energy back increase your move speed for set by 70 percent for five seconds and you're immune to movement impairing effects roots uh stuns slows anything so if you're trying to escape these are fantastic boots to have and then finally the last thing and in, in, in corrupted dungeon specifically if you don't know what cape to use the fort sterling cape is really really good for new players um because it allows you to get rid of stun silence and roots 
much like the scholar sandals so if you have the scholar sandals on you don't need this but if you're not if you're like hey you know what i want to fame farm i want to infamy farm i don't want to do pvp uh this is a really good combo to have for uh escaping pvps and getting shards all right so when you do invade somebody a good rule of thumb is when you when you first get there take a look at a few things one if he appears on the map like this that means there's a monster that actually saw him and you can go find him secondarily look at where all one where he's fighting and look at the red mobs okay the red mobs will let you know where he's attacking if you start seeing them starting to disappear on the mini map you start seeing the eye show up like you just saw or you start seeing the shards um get out of here that's where you know where they are and you can go get him let's so let's go see if we can get this guy real quick real quick if you're wondering what those mobs look like they look like this and they have like a yellow uh vision thing do not step in front of them this guy's right here so let's give him a shot shall we this guy let's see if i can get him here all right so run away yeah ggs boys just like that also when you do get the kill there is a time limit to loot so make sure you grab him and loot him now i'm in the blue and yellow zone because recording in a uh, red and black zone uh corrupt the dungeon tends to be a bad idea because i did die and lost a little bit of gear so it's cheaper this way but he will and if you're in a, a full loot territory he will drop all of his loot unless something breaks and you can pick it up and run and you have a time limit to grab that loot Pretty simple tip this doesn't really apply to a lot of the very new players the ones going to blue and yellow but when you start moving into red and black zones i recommend doing a riding a tier three or tier four riding horse as your choice of uh, mount or a very cheap ox works as well here's the reason why you don't want to use a swift claw or anything expensive because if you go into a full loot pvp zone especially where pvp is going to be the main thing that you're doing you don't want to lose all that money so a tier three horse will save you a lot of money a tier four will save, or or if you're going in just for infamy and you just happen to die but you want to make sure you have enough uh enough room you can even use an ox as well um just because the ox will allow you to carry a lot more stuff than the horse counterpart and it's kind of the same idea it's a very cheap mount it'll get you from a to b a little bit quicker than on foot and uh yeah i mean what's wrong with saving a little bit of money huh when you get invaded shards will appear around the map um I, I'm, I'm about to show you a clip about what i mean the idea is you want to knock out two of those shards and then fight your battle next to a third one that way if you know if you're about to lose you can quickly knock out the third shard and then the guy will just disappear secondly secondarily these little toads are lifesavers uh, because when you knock when you when you knock one dead it gets this little sticky potion a little sticky ground that is extremely slow they can really slow down and get you away from the enemy enjoy the clip time for blood who do you, you think is gonna take it me or the adversary okay so i think the best strategy you can do is take out two shards that way if you do feel like you're about to lose you just go take out a third one Okay. All right, all right, all right. Good stuff. Good stuff. This guy's uh, not very good, is he? He hasn't found me yet. Wow, what a garbage player. All right, so there, there's a there's an easy crystal to get to over here. <gasps> we found him, boys. Holy shit! All right. Okay. Okay. Oh! All right, just a l couple of miscellaneous tips for you. First being that when you go into a corrupted dungeon, a corrupted dungeon, corrupt hit dungeon make sure you want to do it because when you a out it's a uh, it's a five minute cast time you can't see it here i can i can move real quick it's a five minute cast time that is insane so make sure when you go in one you want to be there or you'll be waiting here a second now you might be able to get out still just fine if you don't get invaded but you are really risking it for not that much of a biscuit in it okay 
Now, uh, the next thing I wanted to say is the more infamy you have, the more, the better the loot and the better the fame will be. So if you take a look at me killing these guys, and uh, and I, I'm, I'm at like 10k infamy, right? I'm, I'm I'm on up there here. I can I can show you. But you, 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 see, you see how much fame I'm getting right there per kill? About 967 per kill. If you go to my stats here and go to my infamy. I'm at I'm at uh, 7,972, which is a little bit lower than I thought. I was at 10k for a bit there, but you know, you know, shit happens, I guess. So you want to you so it's important to try to get as high as you can. And then finally, um, when you do go and invade, and if you lose that invasion, you lose way more infamy uh than you were to gain if you were to get a kill so like if dying really really hurts you in the corrupted dungeon so really really be careful about it okay 